pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A moment of silent reflection. Thank you. Roll call. Here. Would you recess your meeting to call the order of the public hearing for 2015 CDBG? We will do that. Effective now, we will be talking about the 2015 CDBG. Thank you. Um, there is a sign-in sheet going around for the 2015 CDBG public hearing. This is the first public hearing required in the process to allow for public comment on the city's community development block grant. Uh, we are required to have citizen participation and to show that specific participation, we do send around the sign and sheet and ask that the public that are here sign to show that we had citizens at the meeting. The CDBG program was created by an act of Congress. It is a, a federal entitlement program. It is administered at the state level by DCED and under the rule of Act 179. The purpose is to assist cities, boroughs, towns, townships, and counties with basically projects that will enhance the uh, living environment and expand economic opportunities, principally for low and moderate income persons. Today we'll discuss a couple of the regulatory requirements of the program. We'll talk about projects for 2015 funding. We'll talk about any new proposals you may have for funding. And then we'll close the project proposal phase at the end of this hearing. We estimate that there are $300,000 available to the city in 2015. There are, there are packets up here with the agenda and the schedule for this year's preparation to submit the application is attached. We will have the first public hearing today. Project selection will be July 13th here at City Council where they will take action to select the project they will fund. And the final public hearing will be here on August 10th at 6.15. We do not know yet exact allocation for the dates that BCED wants the applications to be submitted. CDBG funds can be used to carry out a wide range of activities, mostly water, sewer, infrastructure, roads, streets, um, some revitalization, some demolition, economic development. Um, things you cannot do are any activities that are political in nature, operate in, operating in maintenance expenses, or general purpose government activities. In order to fund the project with CDBG funds, there are three different national objectives you could meet. Principally, the, most of the funds, 70% or more, have to go to benefit low to moderate income persons. So 51% of the or greater of the individuals benefiting from the project must be low to moderate income, according to the HUD Section 8 income limits. Another national objective is the elimination of slum and blight. So a maximum of 30% of the city's funds each year could be spent to eliminate a slum or blighting influence. Or the 30% could be spent on what's called a response to an urgent need, but that's only when, say, the governor declares an emergency across the state and the city does not have any other funds available to rectify an emergency situation. They could use their CDBG. That is very rarely used. And like I said, it has to be a state of emergency. A couple of the regulatory requirements. Again, they are attached to the agenda if you're interested in reviewing them. There is a fair housing notice. Each year, some, each year somebody adopts a fair housing resolution that basically establishes a plan to further fair housing and prohibit discrimination pertaining to fair housing. This evening, I will ask them at, during the regular meeting to adopt this year's fair housing resolution. There's also an anti-displacement plan the city will be adopting again this evening. And that basically says it's the intent of the city to undertake activities that will not displace people. And if people are displaced due to a CDBG activity, there will be a one-for-one -one replacement to ensure that that, housing that, is, that that housing that is destroyed is put back on in the city. Another one is the annual 504 review, which again is attached to the packet. And that's basically a statement that says the city will make every effort to make all meetings and hearings accessible to the public. Uh, several years ago, the city would have done as all municipalities across the state did a 504 plan, which basically looked at all city-owned facilities, talked about accessibility and a plan to rectify those needs. 
So during the hearing this evening, I welcome if you have any comments on any accessibility at the city's own buildings, let me know, let the city know so that we can deal with those issues. So if at any time if you see any accessibility issues, please let us know. And finally, the third one we have to talk about the regulatory requirements, or the fourth one, I'm sorry, is the section three preference statement, which is at the bottom of the agenda that's available. And that basically says that a section three resident is a person that resides in the service area who is, has an income below $33,150. And a section three business is a business of which 51% or more is owned by an individual with an income below $33,150. Section three is applicable to HUD funded programs and it basically is to create economic opportunities for those people with an income below that amount. So if the city was hiring as a result of their community development block grant program, they would be encouraged to find or to look for a Section 3 resident. When they're doing projects that are funded with CDBG funds that amount to over $100,000, we make outreach looking for Section 3 contractors and we have our contractors make outreach to Section 3 subcontractors. That's what the Section 3 program is for. Today's public hearing is the first step in developing the three-year plan for the CDBG program. Currently under construction with CDBG funds is Chestnut Street, as you all already know. We also have some demolition funds available to do another demolition project. We don't have one selected yet. And the Oppenheimer Pleasure Grounds basketball slash tennis court were just resurfaced with the CDBG funds. Are there any other projects you'd like to propose this evening for consideration for 2015 funding? Yes, Regina. I would like to go back to last year when I addressed the council and asked that in my neighborhood, the monies from the Safe Route group that came to repair sidewalks be used. So I would like to ask that anyone on council please consider doing that and let that be one of the projects that you use the money for. Sidewalks on what street? The sidewalks on Walnut, South 4th Street, and that would be from uh, the railroad, South 2nd, all the way down to the high school. And from Spruce Street and South 2nd, all the way down uh, to the football field. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Yes. Yes. The, the flooding issue in the, at the ward, which would encompass anything <laughs> from Reagan Street underpass all the way to the Celotex plant on Front Street. My property being one of them, which is constantly flooded. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Excuse me, Jamie. So yes. when would that, when we uh, sit here and we ask for these things, when do we expect that to be taken care of? Next year? The, the city will decide what projects they're going to fund with 2015 funding next month. Yeah. Those will be included in the application to DCD. We won't have the funding until 2016. We don't even have 2014 funding yet. So it is 2016. Yes. Oh, okay. yep, we are currently in the process of getting our 2014 contracts. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I thought Resident had to pay for their own sidewalk. That the city ordinance does say residents do need to pay for their own sidewalks. There are exceptions to that, as you've seen on Chestnut Street while we're doing the complete street reconstruction project. So there is precedent set when the city does a large scale project, they do they do the sidewalks. But yes, there is an ordinance that code enforcement can enforce that residents with code non-code compliant sidewalks could be required to repair their sidewalks. And Correct. also um, the uh, Hill Group. The uh, monies, what that went, that budget went over 130 okay. some odd dollars. Will that money be used to take up? Will that money, will the money, the grant that you're asking no. for? No. Okay. That is not involved in the Market Street that. project. Thank no. You. You're welcome. Jamie, Chestnut Street is on there, right? Yes, Chestnut Street is, is already the one that we have on the list. So we got the money for the $32. Are there any other comments on projects to be considered? Are there any comments on any historical or environmental impacts that may result as a result of CDBG projects? That wouldn't include the uh, cemetery on South Fourth and Spruce, would it? I'm not sure. What, what, what about the cemetery? Um, straightening up the headstones? No, that would be different. 
Okay, I just want to mention as part of our public hearing that, as you know, in the past, the city has demolished properties, demolished uh, vacant houses with CDG funds. We have auctioned off properties to get fair market value based on the price someone is willing to pay for those, and that becomes CDBG program <laughs> income. I see 144 South Street's on the agenda tonight, so that would be another CDBG one where we would change the use from demolition to selling it to the highest bidder. Um, right now, we don't have any others besides that one, but if we were to demolish a house over the next year with CDBG funds, again, the same thing would apply. If we demolish it and the city should choose, they may change the use from demolition to selling it to the highest bidder, and that is in compliance with the regulations. <coughs> The city has $16,178.88 of program income that was generated through the sale of those properties that have been cleared with CDG funds and through the Housing Revolving Loan Fund. Those funds are being used to pay the current Chestnut Street invoice for, for construction on Chestnut Street. If there are no other comments during the public hearing, we can adjourn the public hearing and go back to the regular meeting. Nice chance. Okay, we your part of the meeting is done. All right, I just want to ask while I'm up here, as related to the CCBG, there are four, I believe, different plans that we need to adopt this evening. <coughs> we have this year's fair housing resolution. It's required to be adopted every year, so you will see that every year for your approval. We have a procurement policy, and again, this just says basically you're going to follow local code, and if you're going to perform procure professional services, you know, the plan that you're going to follow, and then, of course, construction bidding follows the requirements of this construction. There's a citizen participation plan here this evening that needs to be adopted. That's just a requirement of the CDBG program. We made some updates to it just to make sure we included all of the uh, required information for the CDD. So that's here for you to adopt this evening. And then finally, the new residential residential anti-displacement relocation assistance plan. Again, we just made a couple changes to make sure all the appropriate language was incorporated in it. And we needed to adopt this evening, so everything's up to date. Why don't you just stay right there for a second? Okay. Okay. Uh, first of all, is there any audience comment on any other agenda items? Thank you. Okay. Now, we need a fair housing resolution. That, I believe, everybody has in front of them. This is a statement we've been passing in forever. I'll make that formal motion. In a second? Shipman? Yeah. Right there? Yes. Henry? Yes. Thank you. Are they all in here, James? Yes, all four of them are. Well, I, you should have them all there, but there are two copies of everything right here. Here. Okay. Next. Procurement policy? Next one down. See how many space Okay. Oh. I think Terry tried to put them in order for you. Okay. City so summary procurement policy and you need a motion to accept. Second. Second. Wagner? Yes. Henry? Yes. Eister? Yes. First name? Yes. Shetman? Yes. City so summary citizen participation plan. You need a motion to accept. I'll make it. Displacement and Relocation Assistance Plan. Can you make that one any longer? I know. Motion to accept. Make that motion. Second. Second. Eister? Yes. First thing? Yes. Shipman? Yes. Right here? Yes. And? Yes. And while we're at it, how about 1062 Miller Street? Do something on that? Yes. Um, we did solicit bids or quotes for the demolition of 1062 Miller Street. We received three different quotes. The lowest quote was from Affordable Construction, which is out of Cole Township, for $13,000. And this evening, I would recommend that you award that contract yeah. to Affordable Oops. Construction and Demolition, LLC, for $13,000. Um, the house is not in, is under acquisition right now, so in July, early July, that should be finalized, and then we can get the contract out to the contractor to get started on that. It's going to be paid for with your Keystone funds from the housing what were the other two bidders and how much? Sure. They were purchase excavating was at fourteen thousand five hundred, and Schlegel excavating was actually at thirteen thousand four hundred and thirteen dollars. I've worked with affordable construction in Northumberland County 
uh, Mount Carmel Township, and they've done a good job getting things down. I haven't heard of any issues that they had. Um, we did receive one bid from Steinbacher, but it came in the mail today, and they were due last Thursday. So it was not open. Any questions? I have a question. Okay. I don't know if I should bring it up now. But How about 1062 Miller Street? Huh? So it's about 1062 Miller Street. Okay. Hold your thought. You can see it up there. All right. So we need a motion to accept the Miller Street demolition. I'll make that motion. Second. Technically, we would owe them $33,300, and also the building 
in this proposal here that gave us. They paid for the lighting on the parking lot for the next 20 years, and also our camera system is hooked up to their power for the next 20 years. And what they've done by going to 1.5% increase each year, they have built the $33,300 into it, and the, the power and so forth that wasn't actually based in there. At the end of 20 years, they would re recoup 32,000 some odd dollars. I don't have that number in front of me. Just shy of 33. Uh, of course, if you look at the numbers at the bottom, for the 2%, uh, you would pick up roughly, there's an extra 3,752. <coughs> Question being, we can make the decision this evening, we're going to go 1.5 or 2%. I did talk to Mr. Backus today, and I talked to Dale this morning, I talked to Rick, Dave, you and I didn't get a chance to talk. John and I talked earlier. One of the possibilities, when I talked to him on the phone today, splitting the difference between the 1.5 and the 2, 1.75. <coughs> we picked that up a quarter of a percent up. So that's your recommendation? Or are you well, I want comments because we've been working back and forth on this. And John, of course, he would like 2%. I don't blame him. I would like, well, John, maybe. Three, but, yeah. but three or, uh, yeah. John has was up to five. <laughs> the numbers just don't work. Uh, that's where we're at. Well, we definitely improved an area of the city. Well, and we worked with a piece of property that we wouldn't have fixed up. And one more thing, the, the, the 33000 which they put into their note, they are paying yeah, interest on it. So, yeah. uh, if, if we didn't have the money to do it, we'd be paying interest on it also. It's, and they were probably on a commercial loan, uh, probably 4%, 3.5 would be an equity commercial loan today. We have uh, any kind of idea what it would cost most of like that. Well, I need to sit down and figure out the power. The cost isn't that great, but there is, of course, a cost incurred lighting that parking lot. And they maintain the lights now. They are LEDs. Uh, it isn't like it's a, a real high cost per month, but there is some maintenance involved and so forth. And the camera system doesn't take a whole lot either. But it is taken care of. The, uh, current rate of increase is 3% a year. Um, yes. Let's take a look at these numbers. If we reduce it to 2%, we'll allow them to recoup their cost plus interest over 20 years. Um, I don't know what the light is going to be. It's not going to be that much. Um, I'm comfortable going to 2%. I'm not really comfortable going below 2 Dale? I really don't know much about it other than when you talked to me today. I looked at it. I mean, can we wait another two weeks to go on it? Does it have to be tonight? It doesn't have to be tonight. No, but we've been waiting for this for months, and so we ought to get it done. And it's, and even if John, you know, that's John's recommendation, we just, we'll just decide we want to. Because earlier today, I thought, you know, the higher number was going to be two. Two. Two or three. Two. Two. Well, that's all it is. That's what we just want everybody's so, opinion. Right. Right. Uh, I, I mean, I, I told Jim my feelings earlier on. Uh, 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 I mean, it doesn't matter. Okay. David? I'd go along with John. I'd personally rather see the 175 try to balance it up with the fairness because they did us the favor. They didn't have to do what they got. Well, they did. I just, but, a quarter percent is a quarter percent. I understand that. Or do you think it's, it's no kind of a deal breaker? Of any, I mean, everything's done, but the fact is... Well, I have to take this back to them. I, I, I don't think it's a deal breaker, no. I would just, like I said, if we were in a situation where we didn't have the money to do it, am I correct, Dale? Yeah. To pay that part of it. Well, I wouldn't have your budget side. Yeah, well, that means we didn't have the money to do it. Well, we want to make sure, like, when we talk, because when the snow goes down, then we'll tie that camera thing all together. And that's what we're waiting for, and I want to make sure there's no issue with that whatsoever. We need that power from there. And if there's an issue, we need to come back. If there's an issue, we'll bring it back. 
That's true. I think we vote on the same thing. That's true. John, we make that for a motion. I'll make a motion. The, the rate of increase be reduced from 3 to 2%. Yeah. I'll second Henry? Yeah. Meister? Yes. Persing? Yes. Chisholm? Yes. Reitner? Yes. Uh, change order Chester Street Project, Jim. Change order of Chester Street would consist of we were running uh, rain spouting out through the curbs. We're going to change that cost. I don't have that. I don't have that in front of me. Can you give it to me? What, what the cut? No, that's over. The COP? I don't want that one. This is the OP. Yeah. Yeah, I have that. The Chester Street's not in there. What it is, instead of running the Schedule 40 pipe out through the curb under the sidewalk, to some of the places the elevation didn't work, we're bringing out the flex four inch black pipe out underneath the sidewalk deeper and then coming out along the curb and tying into the catch bases. The cost doesn't change that much uh, on the numbers. But, I don't know why Terry doesn't have that here. I didn't see it in my package. I don't know why I see it. Maybe she, maybe she put these two in here. I, I think she got out. She might have been. I have doubled that too. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Think. She got the one more. Yeah. yeah. She put two in the same one in. Uh, I'm going to just put it on the table. We'll pass it the next council meeting. I know they're going to start installing it. I know that. They're getting the way. In some of the places, it just doesn't work. We can't get the, uh, the grade coming out of the uh, rain spotting to match up to the curb line. That's our problem. So I mean, we can't stop that. But I'll bring it. So is there any questions on what I'm trying to explain here? <coughs> Make sure I get the information that the, the cost per, per uh, mineral foot. Change order for the OPG. OPG. There was a change order. The original quote was uh, thirty-four thousand five hundred to pay the OP playground, which Jamie had mentioned earlier, which came out of block grant money. There was a change order. A change order of three thousand two hundred twenty dollars. Found a bad spot which was dug out, put the backfill in it, and they could put two big stone in, put two inches of base, and then put the top <coughs> on Now we do have a credit coming. Jamie? Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I don't know the numbers uh, in front of you. You didn't see what the credit that we have coming is what, roughly $700? It's roughly $800. $800, okay. Which we take off the of 3200, but right now I want to take and ask to pass the change over 3200 dollars or 20 dollars. That way, change order is covered, and the credit will take up a chunk of that. And it had to be done. That was something they found out for these early safety issues. Well, definitely. We don't want to take and pay for a bad spot because yeah. that kind of money is being spent. Is there any questions on that? So that's a motion to accept the change. Exactly. <coughs> Last week, 
it was obvious they did not include services in their proposal that were required to complete the job. There was concern that they didn't understand the RFP. However, we did have four other proposals for all of the work at the same level, so I'm not sure what they didn't understand. They felt they didn't have the proper information. I explained to them everybody got the same information. So just that that's just background right now. <laughs> Anyway, we got the, the five proposals. Um, CES, who is the current engineer, was right in the middle. His, his actual scope of work included was the best. The other proposals that we got didn't have a whole lot of information about the scope of work that they would include to do as part of the project. But what I'm recommending this evening is that we do award CES based on the criteria for review that you do include in your RFPs, which includes the adequacy of the proposals and addressing the needs the relevant experience, quality of work, and adequacy of resources, and records of completing projects on time. Cost is the fifth, nearly final, thing we look at when awarding these engineering contracts. So that's my recommendation this evening, is that you do award to CES for this contract for $122,500. Question. Does it come with good or uh, Unit check. They were missing what in your proposal? Well, they did not include a great deal or any information about the scope of work that they understood needed to be done, especially for the PennDOT part of it, because there's a lot of plans and things that need to be done for PennDOT funding. And they, they did not give any examples of the experience they have working on PennDOT funded projects. They did intend to use a WBE for a woman business enterprise firm to do that part of the project. But in that sub, that you mentioned in the, the agreement or their In their proposal, the proposal. sub was mentioned, but I didn't get any specifics about their experience. Right. And what that means, basically, when we look at a contract like that, we look and see who the companies are so we can research them and see what references they brought. They brought no references to, to back that up. Well, since the beginning of time, people have bid incorrectly and late and everything else, so there's nothing new about this. But you don't meet the standard, that's why the professional, right. and, that uh, professional people are doing it. Bassett did indicate if they were not awarded as the lowest that they would protest that. When I discussed that with Bill Siegel, he said, okay. <laughs> They're allowed to do that. They, that. That is their right. Uh, I do not, there was, obviously there was no additional information given to any of the other bidders that Bassett did not have. So I don't feel like there's any, you have any issue with yeah, the way else this right? right. They were the only ones that said no. Also, Bassett did say if we got it, to be more money. There would be a change. If they were awarded, there would definitely be a change because they did not get all the work. I, I can clearly say that if bids were or responses to proposals who were required at a certain date and time, then there's a subsequent meeting, and then there's an attempt to have negotiations as part of that meeting. You start to get into a, a difficult area where you don't want to do it. I would much rather hear that you rejected that response and moved on to the other ones. And that's basically what Bassett tried to do. And you just can't do that. They met with Jamie, started going over, basically negotiating a new number, and you can't, you can't do that. I, uh, I was involved with a matter where Bassett was involved in the, the municipality had the very same problem, so this seems to be a consistent theme. Okay, so the motion to accept, and let's I make that motion to accept the CES bid for the $122,500. I'll second. Christine? Yes. Shipman? Yes. Reitner? Yes. Henry? Yes. Meister? Yes. And Mayor, if you would use the um, two chain orders you have for the